OK, so today team, we are going to do functions. Uh, and on this topic, team, we are not going to dive deeper into functions like that you do in a pure mathematics or so something like that. It's just like an in introduction. So I will give you what is actually necessary for this module or what you need for your exam only. And we end it there. So these are the objectives for your module. So by the end of this unit, you should be able to describe the concept of functions, represent functions by using graphical representations, identify different types of functions, and that's all. That's all what you need in what? Uh, in this module. Sorry, I'm adding someone here. OK, so definition for a function. A function f from x to y is a relation from x to y having the following properties. The domain of f is x. Then two, if x, y and x, y are prime, like another term, there is an element of f then y must be equal to y prime. What are we saying here, Tim? We are just saying a function is also a relation, right? I think we've actually done a, a topic for relations. A function is also a relation, but not all relations are function, which means from all the relations that, that we might have, part of those relations are what are functions. And if we have X being mapped to Y, that same X, if it is being mapped to another Y prime or another element, maybe it's A or so, that value here must be equal to this value for it to be a function. That's uh, actually the meaning of this statement. So a function from X to Y is, is sometimes denoted by uh, if we search that X is mapped to Y, to what to Y, or X implies Y. For example, here, we've got this relation where one is mapped to A, two is mapped to B, and three is mapped to what? Uh, and three is mapped to what? To A. So there is what we call, uh, let me add some people here. There's what we call a domain and range. There's what we call what a domain and range. Jim, can we make sure all our mic are on mute? Okay, thank you. So let's talk about domain and range. So the domain of F uh, is X, and the range of F is A B. What are we saying here, Tim? We are saying the value of x is, of x will be our what? Uh, will be our domain, and then the values of y will be our range. So the range of a relation R is the set y is an element of y, where x y is an element of R for some x is an element of x. So this statement is just saying all the values or all the elements of y. Uh, will be our will be our range for every x y that we have. So if you take the value of x, it will give us the value of what of y. So this value of x will become our domain, and then the value of y will become our what our range, or the image of x will become our what our range. So the relation is represented as f of x is equal to what uh, uh, is equal to x squared. So this relation is a function and the domain is the set of all real numbers. Uh, is the set of all real numbers. What are we saying here, Tim, is just, uh, if you look at x squared here, what are the values which are defined for this function or what are the possible values of x where this f of x will be defined? That will be our domain. So, the set of all real numbers. You can take even 
any positive, real number or any negative, real, real number, can you still apply to this what? Uh, to this function or to this relation. Okay, so uh, the range of the, uh, of f is the set of all non-negative real numbers. Uh, just wait for me. So the range of f is the set of all non-negative real numbers, like here. If you put any negative number here for x squared, the result of f of x will be always positive. Because the any negative number, if you square any negative number, you will get a what a positive number. Therefore, the range which will be the values of f of x or the values of y will be what will be the set of all non-negative real numbers. So that's all about the domain and the range. So if f is a function where x is mapped to y, given a value in set x, we can obtain the value in set y. So this process is called function application. Whenever you put the value of x into a function and then you get the value of, of y, that process, that's the function application. Okay? I'm trying to add someone here. So for an example, we can apply the function given in example one, this function. If we put f of two, or the value of x is two here, it's two squared, which will be equal to four. So our range or the value of y will be what? Will be equal to four. If we put eight to become f of eight here, then eight squared, you'll get what? 64. 64 will be your range, and then 8 will be your domain. 4 will be your range, then 2 will be your, what? your domain. So here our domain will be 2 and 8, then range will be 4 and 64. I don't know if there is any question there. Okay, I think I can continue. Then we have another example here. This example. Can you make sure that our uh, mic are on mute? Also, can you switch off our camera? Can you make sure that our camera are off? Don't know, Pauline. For others who are using data, can you make sure that your camera is off? I don't know if you are listening. Okay, I think I can continue. I don't know if you have Pauline here or <laughs> she just joined. Okay, which of the following uh, relations define uh, functions from X to Y? I think uh, at the beginning of this uh, presentation, I told you that a function is also um, a relation, but not all relations are functions. So we want to determine on these relations, which of these are functions from this set X to y, which means our x is our domain and our y is our, it's our range. So we can start with this one, R1. I've got this 2 is mapped to 4, and 4, this 4 here, is mapped to this 1, which is fine. But if you look there, this 5 is not mapped to any of these elements of which this is all our domain which means this function or this relation it's not a function at all this relation uh, is not defined 
when x is equal to five, which means it's not a function at all, but it's a what? It's a relation, but it's not a what? It's not a function. If you go on to R2, we've got this two mapped it to four, this four, and then we've got this four here, uh, this one mapped it to this one. Then we have got four mapped it to two, and then we have got five again mapped to six. But can we say R2 is a function? No, why is it not a function? Because uh, we have got this four here. Four, it actually gives us two values for a single, uh, for a single element from X or from the domain. So we can actually say that uh, this one R2 is not a what is not a function. Then let's talk about R3. Uh, we've got this two mapped to four. Here two mapped to four. Then four, this four mapped to this one. And then this five here mapped to six. Then you can say R3 is a function. Why? Because for all the values in our domain here, they are all defined for this function. Or they can give us an image or a, a value in our, in our range. So R3 defines a function because it, uh, it satisfies both the conditions of the function that uh, is every element of X is the first element of some order P and there is no pair which is the same first order pair, but different second order pair. So there is what we call graph of a function. How do we draw graph of a function? I think uh, we have actually done this even at form four level, but uh, let's talk about it. So let f be a real valued uh, function of a variable, a real valued function, which means it actually takes real values as its domain and range. No complex number here. So uh, that is R is mapped to R. The graph of F is the set of all points X, Y in the Cartesian coordinate plane with the property that X is in the domain of F and y is equal to f of what f of x so we have to draw uh, we have to draw the graph of the function f given by the relation y is equal to x squared so i want to draw this graph of y is equal to uh, x squared so for you to draw this uh graph what you need is actually uh the domain the values in the domain and the values in the range so you just to take a uh, certain number of values, then you create a what? A table where you have the value of X and the values of what? Of Y. And then from there, you plot those numbers or those values on your Cartesian uh, plane. Then you join uh, those, those values or those coordinates, join those coordinates, uh, using a smooth or smooth line. So, for example, here, if we put a negative three in our function, what do we get for the value of y? So, here, if you put negative three, uh, then it will become three, uh, negative three squared, which is equal to nine. The same for negative two, you get four. For negative one, you get one. And then for a zero, you get a zero, then for positive one, you get a one, and then for positive two, you get a four. Uh, positive three, three squared, you get a nine. Then you plot these values, minus three and nine. So actually here, you don't need to draw it uh, up to scale. So you can just uh, put your values here. So here it's what? Minus three and what? And a nine. Then you plot here. You go minus four, uh, minus two and four, minus two and four here, minus one and one. Then you join them. You join those uh, lines. You join those coordinates. So that line will be what will be your graph of the function. Uh, y is equal to 
x squared. So this is how you draw a graph of a function. I don't know if there is any question here before I move forward. Okay, if there is a silence, I think uh, I can move on. I, there are a lot of people who are waiting to join here. Let me edit them. Okay, so we came to this point uh, to uh, where we have to actually uh, give the types of a function, the type of a function. And this part is very important to this module. It's very important to this module. Uh, take it serious. So there are three types of function, and they are injective, subjective, and bijective. So let's talk about injective, which is a one-to-one -one function. So by definition, a function f from x to y is said to be one-to-one. -one or injective, if for each y is an element of y, there is at most one x is an element x with f of x is equal to us, is equal to y. Can we make sure that all our mic are on mute? So what does this mean? What you want here uh, is just at most one arrow coming from one element uh, here to the right. other element here. Can you make sure that all our mic are on mute? So the condition given in the definition above for a function to be one to one is equivalent to if x uh like x prime if x and uh, x prime are all elements of x and f of x is equals to a, uh, f of x prime then x must be equal to x prime what does this mean is that whenever we have f of x is equal to another uh f of uh, x the value here must be always equal to the value which is here which means we must only have one arrow from one element here. We do not need another arrow which will be coming from this element, which means why it is saying at most x, one x is an element of x with f of x is equal to y. So if a function from x to y is one to one, each element in y in its arrow diagram, we have at most one arrow pointing to it. If a function is one, uh, is not one to one, some element in Y in its arrow diagram, we have two or we have two or more arrows pointing to it. Which means all the elements here, whenever it have an arrow here, it must be a one arrow pointing to it. So here one arrow going out from one and then uh, to B. And then from B here, we must have only also one arrow pointing to what? Pointing to B. That's a one-to-one -one function, and also that's a an injective function. So, for example, the function f, if we are f, uh, where we have got one B, three uh, A, and two C, from X one two three to Y A B C D is one to one. Why? Because from the this side, we only have at most one arrow. Also take a note of this D here. On an injective function or on any one-to-one uh, -one function, uh, we can actually also have an element in Y which will be actually left without any arrow. Or an element in Y where we we'll have uh, where we will not have the the elements, uh, the element in our domain which will be actually pointing to that element is also acceptable on a what on an injective function. 
I don't know if there is any question here. Okay, let's move to the graph of one to one function or injective function. So on the graph of a one to one function, uh, a graph of a function f is one to one if and only if uh, every horizontal line intersects the graph in at most one point, which means if we draw any horizontal line, any horizontal line, it must cut our graph at most one point. So this one is not a one to one function since we are cutting the graph at two at a two points. So the graph of a one to one function will be looking like this graph. So we move on to subjective. I don't know if there is any question. OK, let's look on subjective. I think there is no end here. On subjective function, if f is a function from x to y. Here, yeah. and the range of f is y. F is said to be on to y or an on to function or a subjective function. So the function from x to y is on to each element in y in its arrow diagram. We have at least one arrow pointing to it, which means uh, only an on to function. We have at most what? Uh, at least one arrow pointing to it, which means some of the injective functions are also what? Subjective functions in nature. But not all uh, subjective functions are what? Are injective, and also not all injective functions are subjective. You will see uh, as we move uh, forward. So the function f uh, here we have got one mapped to a, two mapped to c, three mapped to b, from x where our domain is one, two, three, to y which is our range a, b, c, is one to one and on to function. Why is it? a one to one or why is it an injective function as well as subjective function here so let's see on our arrow diagram if you look on this arrow diagram for all the elements in y we have at most one arrow right here we have at most one r which is also uh the condition for a one to one function and also you have got at least one R, which means you have got more than, uh, it, uh, greater than or equal to one. That's at least one R. That's why we are saying this one is also a what? It's uh, a subjective uh, function. It's a subjective function. But if you were going to have uh, something here animated, uh, like a D here, maybe we are going to have a D here, down here, with nothing pointing to it, which means it was not going to be a what a subjective function, but a subjective function must always have at least one arrow pointing to it here on our range. So that's why this one is a what is a subjective as well as injective. I don't know if there is any question here. So let's talk about the graph of an yes, on to. Can we make sure that all yes, our man. mic are on mute? Vera, I think it's Vera. Also, can we make sure that we switch off all our camera so that uh, we can let those who are using that uh, join smoothly? Yes, man. 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 Yes, man.
So let's talk about the graph of an onto function or a subjective function. So you need to know these terms onto or the other way around, which is subjective. You need to know all these terms because they are used interchangeably. So a graph of a function f is onto if and only if every horizontal line intersects the graph in at least one point. So now it's at least one point. If I draw my line here, at least what? One point. If I draw my line here, here it's like it's an at least one point, but it's not an onto function. Why? For y is equal to modulus of what? Was here for the same value uh, of what? Of y, we've got different values of x, which means it's actually violating the rule for what? For functions. Uh, the one that we stated when we, when I actually introduced what functions. So this is why this one is not the graph of what of a subjective function. But for this one, since if I draw any line here, it uh, I actually cross this graph at least one point. So let's talk about uh, bijective functions. I don't know if there is any question. Let's talk about bijective functions or a one to one correspondence. So you need to know this term as well. So a bijective function is something which is uh, subjective as well as injective. So a function that is both one to one and uh, on to. Is called See, I think a bijective function. Is there any question? Yes, from Jermaine. It's okay. You can ask. Oh, I say, I abandon it on this up and a some graph up. It is one of the subjective, the injective. I think I've actually stated earlier that uh, injective function. They are uh, subjective function, which are also injective function. They are also, it's like if you take an injective function, sometimes it can, it can be also a what? A subjective function. That's why, function. that's why, yes. so that's why you are, uh, we are going to talk about a bijective function, which is also an injective as well as a uh, subjective. So it's not easy to actually Say this one is uh, is an injective function. This one is an a subjective function using the graph without actually using the arrow diagram or any other means. But here, if you look at this graph, we are, what we want is actually if you draw a line here, it must actually cross this graph at least uh, once, which means we are saying it can cross twice or okay, twice, yeah. but at least once. Well, in a injective, we say it will only have to cross the graph at most once, which means it okay. must not cross the graph twice, uh, thrice, something like that. So that's the difference. So maybe if we zoom in this graph and draw a line, we might end up crossing this line uh, twice, something like that. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, so let's talk about the bijective function or one-to-one -one correspondence. So this one is bijective. Bi means what? True. So it's bijective. Why? Because we are considering an injective and a subjective function, or a one-to-one -one function and an onto function. So when we have the combination of those two, it will become a what? A bijective function. So whenever you ask it, uh, if it is a bijective function, you need to check if it is uh, injective as well as subjective function. So a function f where x is mapped to y 
defined by the arrow diagram is both one to one and on to ends. It's a bijective. Why are we saying it's a, a one to one? Was here this A is mapped to three, B mapped to two, C mapped to one. So for all the elements here are mapped to G to single value here. There are no more than two arrows pointing to either one or two or three, which means it's a one to one function. Also, it is a, a it is a subjective function. Why? With at least all these elements have got at least uh, one arrow pointing the uh, pointing to them. So this one, there is an arrow. At two, there is an arrow, and at three, there is an arrow, which means it's a what? It's also a, a subjective function. Hence. It is a what? A bijective function. If we're going to have maybe four here without any arrow mapped to it, it was not going to be a bijective, but it was going to be a what? A one to one function. Uh, take note of that. So let's talk about this graph of a bijective function. If we look at this uh, this graph here, if you draw a line here and here and here, you can actually cross this graph at once, which means this graph somewhere somewhere is a one-to-one -one function as well. It's a what? It's a subjective function. Since adjective function requires you to cross this graph at least once, which means we are also crossing it at least once, which means it's a what? It's a bijective function. If you check at this one, if we draw a line here, you'll be also crossing this graph at once, which means it's also a bijective function because it's at most once as well as at least once. So we'll be moving on to the inverse of a function, the inverse of a function. But if you look on our objectives, uh, all these things are not much of uh, greater importance uh, than the previous uh, types of function that we've actually done. But uh, we also consider it as part of your module but not that very much. So, but you have to know it, you have to do it. So let uh, F be a one-to-one -one correspondence or a bijective function from the set A to the set B. The inverse function of F is the function that assigns to an element B belonging to B, unique element A in A, such that F of A will be equal to B. The inverse function of F is denoted by f to the power negative one, hence the inverse of uh, b will be equal to a when f of a is equal to b. What do we mean by the inverse of a function? Is that all the elements here, which were the range, will become our domain here, will become our domain. For example, here we're having f of a or the value of a being mapped as to, what, to b, for an inverse, this value of B will be actually mapping us to, what, to A, which means this one will be our domain, and this one will become our range if it is a what? An inverse. So that's all about an inverse function there. For example, here, uh, there's this issue where we can have uh, an inverse of a function sometimes might not be a what? A function. For example, uh, we can have this uh, function here. We have got this one mapped to A, this two mapped to A, and this three mapped to C. It's a function here. But if we take the inverse, these values, which were our range, will become our what? Will become our, um, our domain here. Yeah? Then we end up having this A mapped as to these two values, one and two, and then C mapped as to what, to three here. 
So whenever we have this kind of relationship where A gives us two values, it's no longer a what? A function. It's no longer a function. This one uh, gives us what? Give, uh, gives us three. So here is uh, actually, the, uh, this is why we have got this statement, which is say that the inverse of a function may not be a function. But what you are being asked to is just to find an inverse. So you don't need to know if it is in a function or not. Just you have to do is just to find what an inverse of that function. So to know whether it is a function or not, it's not that of greater importance. Because you are not going to be asked to say if the inverse of this function is it a function or not. So you have got this injective function which gives us this inverse. Uh, we have got this one gives us this A and this one gives us B, then gives us D. So whenever it becomes an inverse, which means this one will become our what? our domain and this one will become our range. So we end up having something like this. So A is mapped to one, B is mapped to two, C is mapped to nothing, D is mapped to three. So whenever we have uh, our uh, any element in our domain, uh, which is not, not mapped to any element in our range, then that one will not uh, that one will be not a function. Why? Because there are some values in our domain which will be not defined. So that fun uh, that uh, thing will be not a what or that relation will be not a function. So end up uh, if uh, let's see this one. It's a subjective function with this inverse. I think we've actually came through this type of relationship where we have a single element. Mapped to what? Uh, mapped to to two values. We have got a mapped to two to these two values, which means this one it's not a function either. But this one is a function, but this one it's not what? It's not a function. Why? Because a is actually gives us two values. So let's look at this one again, which is a bijective function. So inverse of a subjective function may not be a function. This is why, let's see, what do we have here? We've got this one, maybe to this, this one, maybe to this, this one, maybe to this. A, maybe to one, B, maybe to three, C, maybe to two. This one, it's a one, this one, it's a function here. This one, it's a function. I think this, this one, this one, it's not a function, but this one, it's a what? It's a function. So there is there is this topic which is also very important, uh, which will be the uh, the functions composition, where you have to add functions to multiply functions, uh, something like that. It's also important the manipulation of a function. You need to know that. So since functions are special kinds of relations, they can form the composition of two functions. So specifically. Suppose that G is a function from X to Y and F is a function from Y to Z. So the resulting function from X uh, to Z is called the composition of F with G and is denoted by F at G, F dot G. I think you have actually came across something like this. Where we have x, y, and z. So a function from x to z here from x to z will be something that will be actually linked through what through this y. I think if you go to transitive relations or so, that's where we end up having the composition function uh, composition. For example, uh, we have got the function uh, g. Where one mapped to A, two mapped to A, three mapped to C, and a function from uh, X uh, is a function from X, G is a function from X, where the domain is one, two, three, and Y is uh, actually A, B, C, which is, which is our range. And we've got F, which is a function from Y to Z. Here, Y will be our domain for what? For F, and Z is the, what is the range for this function F. Where A is mapped to Y and B is mapped to X and C is mapped to Z. So 
the combustion function from X to Z can be represented by an arrow diagram as follows. If you take an arrow diagram, S dot G, ah, not S dot G, F dot G or F at G will be 1Y, 2Y, 3Z. Let's see how do we find this. So the application of F at G on X can be written as F uh, dot G of X or alternatively as F of G of X. So this is our X, this is our Y, this is our Z. If we take uh, this G, this function G, we see that one is mapped to A and two is mapped to A and three is mapped to C. And if we take this uh, function F, which was a function from Y to Z, we see that mm -hmm. uh, A here is mapped to Y, and then B is mapped to X and C is mapped to, what? to Z. So if we want another function from X to Z here, it will be something linked by this, uh, by this uh, set, which is Y. So you take three uh, to C, then to Z, which means we have three what? Three Z, that's why we have this arrow pointing from three to Z. Here we've got two, a, Y, this is why we have this R, which will be pointing straight to Y, from 2 to Y. Also, we have got 1, A, Y. This is why we have got this arrow from 1 to Y. And then this B to X, we will not stand since we do not have uh, any value here, which is actually pointing to this B. So this is a composition, what? Function of F, A, what? of F at G. Uh, there's binary and unar operators. So a function from X by X or X times X into X is called a binary operator on X. So let X be equal to one, two, up to infinity. So if we define f of x, y is equal to x plus, uh, x plus y here, then f is a binary operator on x. So a unary operator of, of a set x associates with the, each single element of x, uh, one element in what? In x. So the definition here, we for this definition, a function x into x here is called a unary operator on what? On x. So this will be our what? Our unary operator and then our binary what? Our binary operator. So let E be a universal set and x is a set. Uh, if we define f of x is equal to x and x is an element of E, then F is a unit operator on P of E. So these things you are not actually going to be asked in our exam. Maybe uh, somewhere, somewhere, what you are going to be asked is just to find uh, maybe F of G, uh, F of X plus uh, G of X, something like that, or F uh, at G of X, just uh, something like that. That what you'll be actually going to be asked. So if I do this, it will be not fair enough. Maybe let me actually find some examples uh, for you for the binary and unary operator so that uh, we can actually go through those examples. So just give me three minutes. I'll find you maybe two or three examples for this type so that we do them together since they also come to uh, your exam. It's part of your exam. So just give me some time. So Tim, are you having something on your screen now? Yes, sir. It's, a, it's okay. Can you make sure, can you make sure that all our mic are on mute? Okay, so let's do this example that we have here. 
So it says a real valued function. Let X be any set uh, and uh, R be the set of uh, real numbers. A function F where X is mapped to R that assigns uh, to each X an element of X a real number. F of X an element of R is called a real valued function. So if F uh, is such that this real number is actually limited to another real number, then it's called a what? A real valued function of a real variable. So, for example, uh, if uh, positive real numbers are mapped to a to real now to real number defined by the f of x equals to log uh, of x, is a real valued uh, is also a what a real valued function. Also, you have got this one. We've got uh, g r is a mapped to, to r defined by g of x, which is e to the power x, is also a real valid function. This was just a, a, an explanation of what is a real valued function. But let's do the operations on functions. So the sum of, uh, of a function, let f and g be real value, uh, real valued functions with the same domain x, that is f of x, uh, f is uh, such that x is mapped right to r and g is such that x is mapped also to r. So the sum of f and g denoted by f plus g here denoted by what by f plus g is a real valued function with the same what domain x that is f plus g such that x is mapped to what to r which is defined by. So if you have uh, f plus g having this plus as an operator here. Uh, what do you have to do is to take the function of f and then you add it to the function of what of g. So it can be written as this or it can be written as f of x plus what plus g of x for all x and element of x. So you need to understand this. If you are given a uh, question written like this, what you are being asked to do is to add f of x and g of x just like this. For example, let f of x be equal to x squared plus 1 and g of x be equal to x plus 2 uh, defines functions f and g from uh, r to r, which means uh, real values to real values. So f plus g at x just like this is equal to f of x plus g of x, which means we'll be taking the value of f of x here, then we add it to the value of what? Of g of x, which means it's x squared plus one plus x plus two, which will give us x squared plus x uh, plus one plus two, which means this one, we can add this one and the two, then we get three. For x, for all x is an element of what of our real is an element of real values or element or element of r. So this one we define what the sum uh, of functions f and what and g. So this is how do you find f plus what f of what, x plus what plus g of x. You might be asked to find the difference of functions where you have to subtract g of x from f of x. Like here, you are given uh, f of x, which will be the value of x being mapped to, what, to real values. Also, g of x, where x is also mapped to, what, to real values. So the difference of f and g denoted by f minus g, which is a function from x to r defined by, if you are given something like this, know that uh, you are being asked to subtract g of x from what? From f of x. Something like this. f minus g of x, which means you'll be taking the value of f of x, then we subtract g of x. So here, for example, we've got f of x as x squared plus one, and g of x as x squared 
is x plus 2. So then f minus g at x will be equal to f at x minus g at x. Then x squared plus 1, which is the value of f of x. Then we subtract uh, the value of g of x. Then it will become x squared minus x. And uh, this 1 minus 2, which will give us negative 1. So we will get x squared minus x minus 1. For all x is an element of what? Of real values. So this is how do you do it? So there is the product. The product uh, of functions. For example, here if you are given something like f at g, f dot g at x, here it is actually asking you to multiply f of x and g of x. So, for example, you are given f of x v equal to x squared plus one, and g of x v equal to x plus two. So, uh, define functions f and g from r to r. Uh, if this one define a function uh, f and g from r to r, then f dot g or f times g at x will be equal to f of x times that times g of x. Which means we need to expand each and every element in this bracket, multiply each and every element in this bracket, which will give us x cubed uh, plus 2x squared plus x plus 2, which will be your what? Your result, which will be your answer. So this is all about what? Uh, about product addition and the difference of functions. I think that's the part that was left uh, on your slides. <laughs> so I don't know if there is any question. If there are no questions, this is the end of our presentation. This was the part that was actually supposed to be presented by the group of four, but they actually give ex excuses uh, where they were actually supposed to be presenting. Uh, there is a hand by Mfaro. Can you ask Mfaro? Okay, so the double super module paid in those are the final words there about my factions. Yes. Pamojure it's enough. Uh, it's not pure mathematics, it's a discrete mathematics. So we actually require you to know only those things. It's enough. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay. I don't know if there is any hint. Is there any hint here? I do not see any end. So thank you, Tim, for actually attending this uh, presentation.